Good morning guys, good morning internet. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and back and I'm back again with another narrated our time lapse video for us to take a look at and you know, uh just talk about in general, uh figure things out and whatnot. So this one's fairly unique because I'm starting out with a sketch that I made on paper, uh on my little sketchbook, which we're what we're looking at. Uh you can see that um yeah there's a mermaid sketch in there um which i'll talk about where the idea came from and all that stuff and whatnot uh but for now let's just go ahead and start talking about what's going on in in the video uh talk about the process notes because really i think that's like the most important thing about these whole videos is just to talk about the process um it's typically rinse and repeat <laughs> it's a lot of me repeating the same stuff that i say over and over again but you know for the new viewers it's always refreshing to see someone else's work in their process because everyone's process is different anyways but anyways enough about that <laughs> um so i took this sketch that i did from my sketchbook and it's a sketch of a mermaid and a little boy and uh i made some edits on the original sketch because it's not really clear as to what is going on like it looks like there's this boy with his hands high up in the air like i don't know looking at the mermaid or something but really the idea behind the image is that the boy is um in an aquarium basically like there's this private aquarium and he's looking through the glass which is really just the idea um <laughs> behind the sketch um but yeah um so basically like uh, i took that sketch from my sketchbook and basically redrawing everything because I, I needed to fine tune some things just to make things a little bit more readable and a little bit more understandable. Uh, adding colors obviously would make sense. Um, like if I had colored that original sketch with like color pencil or watercolor or something, like it would have made sense as to what I was trying to portray. But just that line sketch alone in that sketchbook like did not make sense because you know it's like what is that little boy doing at the bottom? Um, obviously it makes a lot more sense now, now that you guys saw the final image at the very beginning of the video, it's like, oh yeah, so the little kid's supposed to be in an aquarium or something, so it makes sense. Um, but the initial sketch didn't look like it, you know, so anyways, I took this sketch, you know, and obviously, you know, what I did was I basically just traced over a lot of the things that was already on there. Um, so I changed the boy into a little girl because I found a good reference for the little girl in an aquarium. And so that's the reason why I turned into a girl. Um, as for the mermaid, um, so I took the sketch of the original mermaid, but I flipped her because I thought that the pose would be more dynamic um, and would be a little bit different. But everything else from the original sketch was just pretty much copied directly. I just pretty much... Um, uh traced over my original fishes drawing and just pretty much just put them um in my piece um in my digital piece so but yeah <laughs> i guess um um yeah let's talk about the idea where the idea come from um so i've been doing daily spit paints uh for my speed paints um the speed paint prompts and whatnot um and the prompt for the day that i did this was called um was private aquarium well with daily spit paint in facebook okay so the daily spit paint is a group in facebook and every day they give out four prompts and you know you could just do one or you could do all four however you know you're feeling like that day if you have a lot of time then hey do all four but it's a 30 minute speed paint you know so the whole point of the group is to be efficient with your drawing skills and whatnot um Anyway, so I've been doing that every day as part of my warm up or as part of my, you know, routine. And 
So what I've been doing lately is at work, I've been asking people to pick the prompt for me because I think it's a super challenge, you know, because when I read the prompt, sometimes I get ideas off the top of my head, you know, like maybe I won't get ideas for three of them, but I'll definitely get an idea for one of them. I'm like, oh yeah, I could see that image in my head. Maybe that would look cool, you know? So typically that's what happens when I read prompts, either I get an idea or I don't. Um, so anyways, I thought for an even better challenge is to have someone else pick the prompt for me, because if for, if for example, like prompt number one, I got an idea for it. I'm like, oh yeah, I got an image in my head that would look cool. But then everyone of my coworkers voted for prompt number three, for example, and I have no idea for prompt number three, then that becomes a super challenge even for me, you know? And so that's what I've been doing lately, you know? So I've been asking my coworkers, okay, so what should I do today? You know, blah, blah, blah. And for that particular day, <laughs> they all picked private aquarium, which as far as I could remember, I didn't have an idea of what to do for a private aquarium. Um, I actually take it back. I just now remember I did have an idea for the private aquarium, but my idea for private aquarium was, you know, your standard private aquarium, your, your small tank that you could put in your room and whatnot. Definitely not like sea world type of aquarium. <laughs> like I'm drawing in, in my, in the scene right now. But anyway, I just remember that I was thinking that. Okay. Anyways. So um they picked the private aquarium and you know i started thinking in my head you know composition ideas and whatnot and out of nowhere my co-worker sandy who's an amazing artist by the way uh, i'm gonna link to her instagrams just so that you guys could check out her work she's really really awesome she's really amazing anyway she, she gave me this brilliant challenge but as she said just randomly just you know, out of nowhere, she was like, I expect a mermaid <laughs> in that illustration. And so that's how the mermaid idea came about. And I was like, oh yeah, a mermaid in a private aquarium. Like, that's a cool idea. Let's go with that. And so there you go. That's how the idea for this illustration came about. Um, so yeah. Um, and it was really cool because, um, this is probably like the first sketch actually i think that so far this year this is like the only one that i turned into a digital painting um typically like a lot of my digital speed paints are the ones that get turned into a digital three hour speed paint just because it's already there in my computer i don't know if it's you know i don't have to scan it in or take photos of it and whatnot but this one um is definitely it was like so interesting with the idea or like the idea of it was so interesting that i just had to turn it into a digital painting so so yeah i mean after i did that sketch you know and um after i did that uh ballpoint sketch you know i already knew that that weekend i was gonna spend about three hours trying to turn it into a digital painting just because it was such a cool idea in my head. And plus, part of the reason why I wanted to turn it to digital painting was because what I pictured in my head didn't really come across in the sketchpad, which you could kind of see the sketchpad right now. Like I was saying, like the kid's hand is raised in that photo, right? And my idea is that he, that little boy was leaning into a window and, you know, uh, he's leaning into a glass and he's looking at all the fishes and the mermaid as if it was like a private aquarium like sea world or something you know so that was like the idea behind it and it wasn't it wasn't very clear in the sketch and that that's part of the reason why i'm like i have to turn this into a digital painting just so that the idea reads better you know and this is where color helped and again like i was saying if i had done some color pencil sketch on it on top of that drawing like i think it would have made a lot more sense um but i didn't so yeah but now that i've pretty much finished all my 
initial sketching and resketch of the scene and this is pretty much it like i just resketched the whole s scene out um modified obviously some um some poses and then switch out some of the fishes you know the fishes were all closer together and i kind of just moved them all around and whatnot um but yeah um after n now that all of this is set i'm gonna start my coloring phase which i will talk about in a little bit Okay, so at this point I have started my coloring phase um, and I <laughs> wanted to collect my thoughts for a second uh, to discuss this whole coloring phase because um, I have been having like a sort of a dilemma, well not so much as a dilemma but kind of like a a shift in thinking in in some of my process methods uh, recently and this happened recently too at the time of this recording um which this video is set for september and that's when i when i'm planning on releasing this video and i'm recording this months ahead of time so um by the time september rolls around maybe my speed painting coloring process would be a little different by then than what i'm doing now um, but basically, um, that's what I re wanted to talk about with my whole coloring phase. So, uh, 
the way I color and the way I do my colors is that uh, I know since the colors are going to shift and a lot of the shading is going to shift, I literally just throw in a bunch of colors typically to start things out with. And then since I'm going to blend them into recognizable shapes that I basically build all my details upon, um, I wasn't so much concerned with colors at that point. Like I apply like a little bit of color theory when, when I'm doing the coloring phase, which is um, uh, split complementary, I think is what it's called. Let me do a quick uh, Google search on it. But I think it's called split uh, complementary color, um, which the way it works is that Okay, well, I'm just going to read what Google says. A split complementary color scheme is one where a primary color is used with the two anal analogous colors to its complement. So basically, you pick like two colors from the opposite end of the color wheel, and then you pick one that's like directly opposite those two, or between directly opposite between those two on the opposite side of the wheel. And so typically, that's what I do. You know, I just randomly just move the sliders around just to get those three hues. And then I turn on the hue shift just to get a little bit of uh, variation. Um, but people have been commenting on, on my colors for, for a while now. <laughs> I think it's almost been a year and it feels so bad. This is it's sketch zone specifically, uh, this group that I'm part of and the people in sketch zone has been mentioning it off and on like for a year or so. I think it's been mentioned like five or seven times throughout like the past year. And I feel so bad because it feels like I'm ignoring all their comments, but I'm really not. It's just, you know, uh, when it first started getting it, all those comments like my intention with my speed paints first is first and foremost like composition because my composition is so horrible it's not even funny how horrible my composition is and so that's really just been my concentration and when it comes to colors yeah i apply a little bit of color theory when i apply my colors but like i it's not like in my forehead a lot um the only thing in my forehead that it's really predominant in my head um is the use of pink and green because they keep noticing the use of pink and green which with green i've i've been really good at limiting green as of late but with pink pink is so so troublesome with pink like i don't consciously think of picking pink and basically yeah uh, i'll explain later what's going on with the pink but anyways um Let's talk about what SketchUp was saying about my colors. What SketchUp was saying about my colors is that they're too saturated. Um, and I haven't really, you know, like thought much about it, like how much of an impact it can have um, until recently. Like I started thinking about it. And this is part of the reason why I picked this particular illustration too, because this is like a really good example of, of, being oversaturated, you know, uh, I mean, I got lucky with this piece because even though it's like immensely, immensely saturated, um, I knew that I was going to do a little fade on the background and specifically I'm talking about the background. The foreground right now is immensely, immensely saturated. Right. And, and that's good. And I'll point out why that's good, but I'm specifically talking about the background, which if you, you know, look back at how I've started out the background, I was picking colors all the way to the far right of the square color. Like if you look at the top right, you see the color wheel and then you see like all the value range and the saturation range in that, in that square. Um, I realized that I do have a bad tendency to go all the way over to the right. Right. And um, it's too much. Saturation has a tendency to darken your picture. That's, that's one of the flaws of saturation. It looks nice and bright, you know, compare like pastel colors. But anyways, my thing that what I was going to say with, with the background was that it's too saturated. And the only save that I have in this picture was that I was going to do that little gradient map of a water. 
to obfuscate what is in the background and that's the only reason why the background got desaturated and somehow i had subconsciously achieved like a nice balance because even though the background was originally super saturated that that transparent blue that i put on top of the background made it to the point where it's desaturated that it became a nice contrast with saturated with the saturated foreground and this is the reason why you know the foreground being that saturated is actually kind of works for me in a way and so my whole point with talking about this whole saturation versus desaturation was that um like my like my friends in sketch on has mentioned is that i'm too saturated which i wasn't really thinking about i, I guess it was the wording that they were phrasing it you know, like they've mentioned it a few times um, before, but like the the wording was just throwing me off. And so I guess I didn't really understand what they mean until recently when Sticky mentioned that I should use grays more often. And that's when it kind of clicked in my head. I'm like, oh, I think I know what they're finally talking about. And then that's when I started reviewing some of my videos and I realized, yeah, in that square on the top right, I go way too far right when I should be somewhere in the middle, you know? And the reason why I should be somewhere in the middle is because I really should save my saturated colors for something that I need to draw attention to, which in this case is the foreground, you know? And so, yeah in my speed paints recently i've started being more conscious about it and i started applying all their suggestion now um but yeah i realized in a lot of my old old work i go too far right you know and then i slowly kind of like desaturate things you know over time so anyways i wanted to point that out because it's kind of a weakness that i'm now beginning to, re to rectify and explore and i feel so bad because sketch on people the my sketch on peeps have been like mentioning it and it looks like i'm totally ignoring them but i'm not it's just i haven't been able to figure out like uh a way to be actionable about it because I love my saturated colors. I really do. And I'm like, I love my saturated colors and telling me not to do saturated colors. is like, how do I get the best of both worlds until I realize, oh, I can have the best of both worlds. You know, I just have to limit the use of it, you know, versus not using it at all, you know? So like, that's kind of like when it clicked in my head, I'm like, okay, well maybe I could just practice that a little bit. So yeah. But anyways, enough about that little color tidbit and whatnot. Uh, I guess I could just go back real quick and talk about what happened in the video so far, which um, I guess they're all just like my standard procedures. You know, I, I throw in a bunch of colors, just randomly go wild and go crazy. Um, again, like I said, I have a tendency for saturation. I'm trying to limit that now. Um, but... Anyways, as soon as I throw in all those colors, I do the smudging action, which is what I'm doing in the foreground right now. And what it does is that it kind of just blends all the color noise that I put in into, you know, recognizable shapes that I slowly uh, draw over and paint over in detail. And that's this is my typical routine, my typical process. I typically try to get a base paint to work on, you know. That's what I did with the background. You know, I did it real fast, real quick with the background. And, you know, as soon as I have all the smudge shapes all down, then I went over and delineated my edges real quick, accentuated shadows and added highlights just to kind of indicate, hey, look, this is a coral reef. And then I added um, that bluish transparent layer to kind of indicate that they're underwater, you know. And so that's what that bluish hue is, which helped a lot in desaturating the background because it was so oversaturated, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and then I'm obviously, well, right now I'm uh, enhancing the background because I realized it got a little too dull. So that's what this little color dodge action is. Um, but before this, I just got done finishing um, smudging the mermaid which and the foreground which now that 
I'm done working real quick on the background. You can see that I'm finally working in the foreground and just kind of slowly start making sense out of all the mess that I put on there. So yeah. And that's what you guys will see me be doing in the next few minutes is just detailing this foreground. <laughs> Okay, so I'm pretty close to finishing this piece. Um, um, I guess I could just wrap up some of my thoughts on this particular illustration, particular speed paint. There's actually a lot of stuff that I really wanted to talk about with this particular piece that I didn't really get to mention. Um, like uh, like the depth, depth issue that I was having. I always have this with my composition. And that's part of the reason why like in my speed paints, my biggest concentration is always composition because I've always had problems with depth and making it look like there's huge spaces behind my foreground characters. So I was struggling with that, with this particular piece, uh, making it look like this aquarium is much, much bigger than, than what it is, you know? Um, so I wanted to talk real quick about that, but I didn't really get the chance to because the color issue I think was so much more important because this piece really provided like a good juxtaposition to talk about that particular uh, concept in artwork where how you limit your saturation use to your foreground objects to, or to any part of your painting that you want to draw attention to, you know. So um, yeah, that's part of the reason why I really got heavily into that subject. And really that's the whole thing with art, you know is that everything is just balance. You just have to continuously balance all these elements in in your artwork, you know? I mean, like the use of super saturated colors all over your piece isn't really like a big no-no, you know? Like the greatest example of that particular 
practice would be fauvism you know henry matisse i mean he uses super saturated colors everywhere you know and really it throws everyone off for a loop you know because there's all this crazy saturated colors but he makes it work you know and that was kind of like my argument against sticky until sticky mentioned well the whole use of grays thing and that's when you know i shifted my line of thinking and i'm like well he might be on to something because yeah everything really needs to be balanced and i think i'm being too saturated too much and so yeah i'm trying to wash that out or i'm trying to watch out for that um process for now and see if my artwork would improve a little bit or go in a totally different direction so yeah um but anyways, um, so yeah, uh, I, I faded those sharks just to kind of indicate that they're farther back. So again, that whole depth issue that I'm always trying to figure out with my composition. I'm like working on that. But yeah, this this illustration was just so much fun to work with. You know, I'm really grateful for Sandy for having um, um, giving me the idea of the mermaid in an aquarium because i'm like yeah that's like a cool thing to draw or like a cool concept to draw it's kind of somewhat sad in a way which that's just another thing i wanted to talk about because it feels like the mermaid's in prison <laughs> but you know i yeah i digress maybe she's happy in there or not so yeah Besides, it doesn't even really look like an aquarium. It kind of looks more like she, the little girls in the submarine looking at the mermaid in an ocean or something. I mean, it could also be that. So, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't really know what the narrative is. I wasn't very consciously thinking of the narrative. So, yeah, that was more all about the illustration. But anyways, that's it. That's the end of the illustration. Thank you for watching it with me. And thank you for listening to me talk about saturated colors. I will catch you guys in the next video. Good night.